Hi, Doug Savage here again. Before we get too far with the exercises, I wanted to share a few more concrete examples of copywriting. Some of these came from participants like yourself. Let's take a look. First up, here's an example about people-centric language. Because people-centric language can be very subjective, you know, what's casual to me might be too casual to you. It's important to think about your audience and the degrees of user friendliness. Here's one example written for different types of readers. It's the classic 404 error, page not found. To make it friendlier, we can do all sorts of things. First, let's get rid of that error code. Then, we can add some useful advice. Give the reader some constructive action they can take to resolve the problem. Then, you could change page not found to something more conversational. In this case, we can't seem to find that page. If we think the reader will be annoyed at this point, we could also add please. And for an even more conversational tone, we can add an interjection. In this case, hmm. But it really depends on your audience. If it's an app for developers, for example, then maybe they need to know those error codes. A regular user might not care whether it's a 404 error, or a 400, or a 500 error, but a developer might need to know those things. If it's an app for public transit, for example, you could have some fun with it and make the text use the language of the situation. Looks like you got off at the wrong stop. The page cannot be found. Or if you're writing for pirates, use pirate language. Ahoy, matey. Anyway, you get the idea. Provide useful, actionable advice using the language that your reader uses. Example number two. Here's a fun before and after example to show just how far you can take these ideas. This first version, it's technically accurate. It's a little too jargony, and it's so dry that I almost fell asleep while I was reading it. Now check out this new version. Same information, but it describes why it's relevant, for security reasons, and it puts a face on the message. It's an amazing difference. I feel like I'm getting advice from a real person now. Example three. And here's an example from one of our products that could use a bit of help. This isn't bad, but it could be more interesting. How about changing the subscribe to the news button to get the latest news? Or maybe even use newspaper language and say read all about it. And saying a lot is happening at SAP doesn't tell us much doesn't explain what's in it for the reader. Why would they want to subscribe? How about keep up on the latest developments? Or find out about the new features before your competitors do? Example for, um, here's a topic about business scenarios. The before version is pretty dry and doesn't sound like something a real live human would say. Here's a revised version. This is a good example of using the word you to personalize the text and make it sound more like you're talking to the reader. And there's a nice use of please here too. Maybe it's not necessary, but we are asking them to read a lot of content. Example five. Here's a site that seems nice and comprehensive at first glance, but when you look a little closer, you can see there are opportunities to make the text friendlier and easier to use. For example, there are two separate fields for first name and last name that could easily be combined and the last name field is way off on the right hand side, which seems odd. The field descriptions are a little too long. You might want to include that information as text prompts within the text box. Um, the submit button is, submit isn't really a word that we use in conversation very often. It would be better to say become a member or something that describes what happens when you click submit. Example six. Here's a website, but it's an unintuitive giant block of text. And most of the content explains error messages that might not even show up. In this case, the entire method of presenting the information has been changed from text to a flowchart, which makes it much easier to use. The purpose of the content is stated clearly at the beginning, and helpful links to more details are provided at the bottom. Example seven. Here's a simple example that shows an unhelpful error message. It provides the correct information, but it doesn't give me any constructive things to do about it. This is also from one of our course participants, and she suggested changing the error message to the friendlier, we're sorry, but this code has been used for a previous purchase. To find out which purchase the code has been used for, go to my purchases and enter the code in the search box. 
This gives the reader something to do about the problem. We've also used sorry here because the reader might be very annoyed that their gift card isn't working. As you can see, there are examples of good and bad copy everywhere you look. So keep an eye out. Uh, look for things that you like, things you don't like. Um, instead of thinking, oh, that's terrible, think, how would I do that differently? Thanks for watching.